Hey everybody, it's Terry here at D-Lab. I got a real collector's item this time to show you. It's an old HRO 5TA1 receiver. Okay, this is the style that has the drawers that go on for each band. I've got all the drawers, matching speaker, power supply, and the original manual. So what we're going to do here is inspect it, test it, and see if it needs recapping. I'm sure it does. Here we go. First off, let's take a good look at the HRO 5TA1 receiver. There's the ID tag. She's in beautiful condition. I love that S meter. Tuning knob, smooth as silk on it. Got the original manual here. Let's take a look inside. She's clean as a whistle. It's funny that that IF can has a gold appearance and the other ones don't. Here's the tuning cap doing its thing. I'm pretty sure that's 100% original. There's a matching speaker. Go on back here. So the speaker is a 500 ohm type. There's the output transformer and that goes into the back of the receiver with these little pin jacks. Okay. I've already popped the top off the power supply because about a year ago I actually changed out the filter cap. This is the old original. Kept it around for the fun of it, but I'll probably just pitch it. I replaced it with this military grade turret board actually was supplied by a company called RJ we got some new filter caps fits in there really nicely so I'll get the top back on the power supply there's the ID tag the 697 there's back the receiver so I have never popped the bottom off of this HRO. Obviously the filter cap and the power supply had to be replaced. I do that routinely. But now we need to pop the bottom off of this guy and see what it needs. So before we pop the bottom, let's go ahead and bring this radio up on a variac and make sure that it even fires up, right? Make sure I'm not wasting my time See a little bit of current draw here, that's a good sign. Remember, I put in a new power supply filter cap, so we're not going to shock this thing, okay? Alright, there's my volume. And there is about 110 volts input. Watching the current meter come up. And there we go. So the coil I have in here is the 7 to 14 megahertz coil. And I'm just using actually an extension cord as an antenna just to see if we get anything. Kind of hear the CWO working a little bit. Selectivity is over here. Phasing's working. All right, good deal. That's all I needed to see. Let's get the bottom off of it. So I don't want this lid to be flopping around on me. I'm working underneath. Okay. So let's set him on its back. Yeah, that tape works good, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get away with it. All right, let's get the bottom panel off. Hopefully, if it's got those bathtub caps, they haven't leaked. When that happens, they make a heck of a mess. There she is. Looks pretty decent. So 
So these uh, so-called bathtub caps, these are 10 microfarad caps and what happens is they start leaking and when they do all that oil gets on the bottom cover and corrodes the crap out of everything. I've seen some pretty nasty ones. So that has not happened here thank God. But as you can see it's got all those little wax caps. This one here has got a crack in the end. So if you're going to keep one of these you know what you got to do. Got to totally recap it, and that's what we're going to do on this one. All right, we're on the magic overhead view camera. I want to start out with these bathtub caps. These are 10 microfarad at 150 volt. So I'm going to replace them with these new little modern technology caps. Okay, so this guy right here is a 10 microfarad at 200 volt. Okay, so you can see there's quite the size difference. But they're actually going to work better than these old things ever did. So what's nice is the screws for these bathtub caps, they actually made pilot holes right on the back of the chassis. So you can get them out pretty easy, thank God. I'm going to take a little time to get these removed. Wiring the new small caps in their place. So if you look at this one, for instance, you see this yellow wire, that's the hot side. Ground swings over here, but right next to it was another ground. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is put the new electrolytic here. Okay. So I'm not gonna use that ground. And then over here, you got another yellow wire that goes down to this terminal board. And there happens to be ground there, but it's not very accessible. So I'm going to go ahead and use this other ground wire, which is hiding over here. We'll use an axial type for that 10 microfarad cap. Alright, so the caps are loose. You can see this guy, the little terminal board, was sharing one of the mounting holes with this cap. So I'll have to put that hardware back in. Get this one out of my way. So, look at that guy, huh? Pretty vintage. Back in the day, I guess that's how they had to do it. They didn't have all these nice new compact caps that we got today, so they had to put in the old bathtub caps. So those caps are full of that PCB type of oil. Okay, so it's highly corrosive and it's not good for you either. It appears as though there may be signs of a little bit of leakage here. Anyway, I will properly dispose of these. Okay, guys? Okay. So I got this wire free. So I think the game plan is still to use this ground over here. So we'll start with this axial lead cap. So once again, I gotta be careful. Cause that camera is right in front of my head. So it's a good chance I could clobber myself. Okay. That one's out. While that terminal board's out of my way, I have access to this lead. Usually I can rock these wires right out. This one's fighting me. Alright, the battle with the wire is over. Get the first cap in. Oh, thought I had a clearance hole over here. I guess not. There we go. So I always wrap. My leads 
get a good mechanical bond. Positive is this way, by the way. It's very seldom that I mess that up, but it does happen. caps in. Let's go over here and do this one. So we're not going to use that ground. We're going to slide in here with the radio cap. Got another waxer there that's going to be in the way, but I'm going to go ahead and get this one in temporarily. Come back and clean things up. Okay. We're going to have to play, make a hole in the terminal, terminal here. It's, uh, it's pretty filled up. So. Take a few minutes and remove what was left of that wire. Okay, let's see if we we'll get that one through. I'm not too worried about uh, hitting this other cap with a little bit of heat because he's coming out anyway, right? But I just want to get this in place. for a little bit of heat here. There she goes. Okay. So we're through the ground lead. Pull this guy a little bit more forward. But it doesn't matter if he hangs out there just a little bit. Remember the old cap had like uh, three inches of lead on it, right? This is some good solder. There it goes. Okay. Get this guy sitting here the way I want him. So I'm just going to leave him loose until that wax cap is out of the way. Now the other cap I found pretty interesting is this big guy. It looks like an electrolytic, but it's actually only a 0.2 microfarad cap. It says 0.25 at... I can't read the voltage, but anyway. I'm going to pull him out and replace it with this Sprague orange drop. I figure out how those brackets holding it because I do not see it. it. Must be hidden under this resistor raid. This resistor looks like he's been pretty toasty too, so we'll change him out. Yep, there it is. It's down there. So get this out of the way. Let's see if I can get my nut driver in there. loose. It looks like that cap just slides on, but more than likely not. 
And I bet you when I take that nut off, the screw will fall down into the chassis. Isn't that how it always goes? I'm still working on that nut. Yep, pink. She fell. I'm going to have to go and find it, but uh, I'm sure it's just laying on my bench. Oh, well, look at there, it is a 600 volt cap. It looks a little moist there. I would say it was getting ready to leak. So it's a good thing we're putting in the sprig. And this is also a 600 volt cap. So throughout this process, you guys are going to see me uh, putting these caps in in various ways, okay? For instance, if I can get the lead to go through the old terminal, We'll do that okay but some of these may be too close or they may be on a fragile tube pin let's say and I do not want to damage that so I may J hook in caps I'll put as many as I can back into the terminals but when it comes to like this guy and this guy and maybe like this guy when they're really in there tight I'm probably gonna have to J hook in the leads it's just the way it works. So for instance, this ground back here, it's good solid ground. So I don't want to interrupt it. I'm just going to J-hook in the back side of this cap. But the front makes it to the terminal board, so we're going to go ahead and land that the way it was with the other one. This one's not too bad to work on. Pretty wide open. But some of these radios, you look up in these cavities and you see these wax caps and you're like, oh man, there's just no way. I've done a lot of uh, replacements using tweezers. <sighs> Brain surgery. So my plan of attack is I'll start by changing out all the 0.1 microfarad caps, okay? So I'm going to replace them with these Mallory 150 series caps. They're nice, they're small, they're rated at 630 volts. So there's no uh, set order. So we'll just start here. So here's an old waxer. Now you see we got some terminals here that we can access pretty easily and the leads will make it. So I'll go ahead and wrap those around those old terminals and uh, look here. Look how that guy, he's all wet. Okay, He's been feeling some heat and look at this one, same thing. Good thing we're doing this. Take a look at this one. Like the whole end is popping right out of it. This thing really needed new caps. So I was able to poke that one through. Let's see if we get as lucky over here. You know, you can take the time if you want to pull those leads out of the terminal board, but usually there's plenty of room for another lead to pass through. Save you a little bit of work. Come on. She goes. It's through. I smell that wax. It's like I'm working on a big pumpkin. Anyway, you can see this just takes time. I usually have uh, music out here blaring, but then you wouldn't be able to hear what I'm saying. But you know what? I'm probably going to go ahead, 
put on some tunes and I'll kind of cut back, shut it off, like intermission time, okay? But look how nice that little mallory is. So you can imagine what it's going to look like when it's completely recapped. It's going to look good. Alright, so we got two 0.1 microfarad caps that are going to meet on the same terminal board. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time clear these leads out of here so I have some access holes. So they wrap these pretty good. Take my X-Acto and unwrap them. There goes one. The other one's up here. Yeah, he doesn't want to cooperate. Is it good as the first one did? mentioned earlier that sometimes you'll see me go through the terminals and sometimes I'll j-hook them so this other lead is going to that tube pen and if you start reefing on those trying to get leads through them you can break that pen and then you're probably gonna cry because trying to find these beautiful old uh, porcelain sockets is next to impossible. So I'm going to just J this guy in. So that I don't hurt anything. I've seen some really terrible recapping jobs. You can tell the person was just in a big old hurry. They just kind of laid cap leads on top of the old ones and tack soldered them. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Why would you take a beautiful old receiver like this and do such a crummy job? It's worth taking your time. See how great that's starting to look? Here we go, two more. So these guys shared the same ground. Once you get going, you get your groove on this thing and it'll start moving a lot faster. You see once you break through that solder, they move a lot easier. Yeah, I do have some solder work over here in case one fights me, but normally I just pop them through. Then the lead's over. And solder them back up. All right, 
right, it's going well. I think Marsha's feeling sorry for me. It's your favorite wine. Is it? Okay. It is. Is it Robert Mandavi? Robert Mandavi, Bourbon Barrel Cabernet. Excellent, excellent. See? Yeah, they, yeah, they see it. Ta -da. Go get yourself a drink. <laughs> Marsha Marsh spent the day tearing down the Christmas tree and putting away all the holiday cheer so I can turn back into my old self again. So it can be a bah humbug? Yeah, sure. I'm actually not a bah humbug, Marsha. I, I actually um, did quite a bit this year, so it was fun. Only because I made you. Yeah, but you know, it's fun and it's over. Good. Now I'm back to my radios. Isn't that great? Lovely. Yeah, get. All right, I couldn't stand it, guys. Had to put on something to work to, so we got a little Alice Cooper here. Obviously, I can't keep this rolling because I'll get popped for copyright. But at this point, I've got all the point one microfarads replaced, and now we're going to move into the point oh one microfarads. Same deal. I'm putting in Mallory's. I think that's all that's in here is 0.1s and 0.01s. I don't see like 0.02s or 0.047s. So if you're getting ready to recap one of these, you better stock up. All right, moving right along with the 0.01 microfarad caps. Well, at least I thought it was. So here's the deal, guys. I'm out here working away. And then Marsha says, oh, he's working. So if I start bringing him glasses of wine, he'll stop working. Right? So she does this every time. The wine routine is not my doings. It's hers. She does it to me. She obviously does not hear what I'm saying. Usually I would hear some things from the... Uh, what, the balcony? By now? So she obviously does not hear what I'm saying. But anyway, the um, point of ones are coming along well. You see we got like four, five in there. There's the fifth. I'm going to work my way across this way. But we're getting awful close. And then of course, the resistors are all in question, especially Mr. Hotsey here. He, he's been baking. But what I'd like to do is just get it recapped, retest. Where we are recapped. So what I need to do now is make sure I didn't screw anything up. Give it a close inspection. Then we'll bring her up on a Variac and see if it still receives. Alright, so I've got all the caps changed. And I've spun the radio around because I need it to match the tube voltage chart. So this is as you're looking into the radio. Now I'm going to verify these voltages, make sure things are close to what it shows in the manual, and that'll let me know if there's any other circuitry issues, okay? So I can't show you this and this at the same time, but I'll go through here, do my best, tell you what we're expecting. This should be according to the book, 222, it's 239, close enough. This should be 98. Okay. Good. Next tube. This is 110. Okay, now this one. There we go. 119, 98. Over here should be 110. Okay, good. Just going to work my way across. There it is. Good. Should have about 66 here. That's a little high. But remember, things are a little different because line voltages vary. Okay. Tell you what, I'm just going to zing through here, and if I see something that's wrong, I'll point it out. Okay. So far, everything's looking really good. Good. Go over here. All 
right? Some of these are tough to get to, like these guys that are buried down here. That's why I got the little insulated tip on this guy. Okay. All right, now I'm over here on V10, and it shows that pin 3 should be 168 volts. It's about 200. That's fine. And then it says, according to this diagram, pin 4 should be 36 volts. Well, guess what? There is absolutely nothing connected to that pin. And I don't even see the pin coming through the socket from the tube. Right? So it's kind of odd. There it shows 36 volts. So I looked up the base configuration on the 6J5, and sure enough, pin 4 is not used. So I don't know why they have this here, okay? So if you're troubleshooting one of these radios and you see this voltage here, guys, I guess you shouldn't pay attention to it. All right, here we go. Test time. I've got coil F installed, which is 500 to 960 kilocycles. I'm just going to take it from one end of the band to the other. Plenty sensitive. What they do? They shout in your face. She's working good.